Hey guys, welcome back for another look at the book of Ephesians. Today we are going through chapter 2, so let's go ahead and jump right into this. All right, well, wasting no time at all, Paul continues on from chapter one in showing us how much we as the church and as the body of Christ are connected to Jesus. Now, it's amazing to me how much symbolism there is in Christ's life that is in direct relation to how we connect with God. Look at verse one. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. We were made alive after we had been dead. Now, in the same way that Jesus was resurrected, God has brought us back to life when we were spiritually and morally dead. Guys, I've said this before, but as as you read through the Bible, you will find that there is nothing here by accident. Everything has a meaning and a purpose, and it connects with other parts of the Bible. Look at verses 4 through 6. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up together, and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now notice that the word together is mentioned three separate times there. We were made alive together, the resurrection. We were raised up together, Christ's ascension into heaven. And then we sit together in heavenly places, which is Jesus' present rule at God's right hand. You know what Paul is trying to tell us here? Is that we're partnered with Christ. We just read in chapter one from yesterday about how we are Christ's body and he, Jesus, is the head. Now, every one of us has an important role to play in being the active physical presence of Jesus to people around us. And when you talk like this, some people will take issue with it and say things like, well, that's pretty bold to claim to be one with Christ. In fact, I've seen others go completely beyond the bounds of scripture with this and reason that, well, if I'm one with Christ, then that means that I am one with God. And if I'm one with God, then I am God. Let me stop you right there because if you are thinking that, you are completely and totally wrong. I mean, like, it's not even an argument. You are dead wrong. When you read the writings of Paul in their full context, you will see he is indicating our positioning and our relationship with God. Let me give you an example. I am a son of God, but I am not the son of God. See the difference? Yes, we are one with Christ because of his great love for us, but let's not make foolish assumptions and cause confusion for ourselves. All right, skip over now and look at verses eight through nine. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Guys, no matter how good you've been, you don't deserve what God did for you. None of us do. I don't. Nobody does. It is by grace given to us to believe in. And most importantly, it's a free gift. All right, last set of scripture I want to look at. This is some really good stuff here. Go to verses 14 through 18. This is just a beautiful passage. For he himself, talking about Jesus, is our peace, who has made both one and has broken down the wall of separation, having abolished in his flesh the enmity that is the law of commandments contained in ordinances so as to create in himself one new man from the two, thus making peace, and that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity. And he came and preached peace to you who were afar off and to those who were near, for through him we both have access by one spirit to the Father. Paul is talking about here the Jews and the Gentiles. What Jesus did was enough for everyone. No matter who you are, you're your background, your history, where you came from, or what your story is, what Jesus did for you gives you complete and total access to God. Something that didn't used to be there for thousands of years before Jesus came to earth, you now have complete and free access to. What an incredible gift that God gave Jesus to bring us back to him. Guys, that is going to wrap it for us today with Ephesians 2. Now, if you're wondering why I've been shooting in my office, it's because it's cold, cold, cold outside. It's like in the 20s. Now, some of you all up north, I know for you that's like summertime, but I'm a southern boy. Mm -mm. We don't do well with this. You all pray for me. All right, come back tomorrow for chapter three. You know I love you guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Hope you have a beautiful and a warm day. We will see you back here tomorrow. Bye-bye.